You might have heard about heart rate variability and how it's important for sleep, but it is a notoriously difficult number to understand. So in this video, I want to demystify this number and show you how you can use it to get better sleep. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Michael Bruce, the sleep doctor here. Heart rate variability, or as it's called HRV, it's a very popular training tool for workouts. It's also a biomarker for measuring exercise recovery. Beside exercise tracking, however, HRV has a lot to tell us about the underlying health of our nervous system and our risk for disease. And believe it or not, it's very closely tied to sleep. In fact, there's an important kind of two-way relationship between HRV and sleep that's often overlooked. So first of all, what is HRV and why is it important? Okay, let's get on the same page about what it actually is. Basically, heart rate variability is a measurement of variation in time between heartbeats. I wanna be clear, this is not a measure of your pulse. That's a measurement of the number of times that your heart beats in a minute. What you may not know is that our hearts don't actually beat at a fixed tempo. There are itty bitty tiny variations in the intervals between the beats, and that's what HRV is trying to measure. Let's look at an example. Say your pulse or your heart rate is, you know, 60 beats per minute. You might imagine then that your heart is gonna beat once every second for 60 seconds. In reality though, the time between any two of these heartbeats actually can change. One might be 1.3 seconds, another one might be 0.9 seconds and so on. But why does our heart rate shift in this way from beat to beat, a lot of people wanna know? That's because HRV is the result of the constant interplay between two parts of our nervous system, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous systems. So in simple terms, the sympathetic nervous system exists to kind of rev the body to action, while the parasympathetic system kind of counteracts this effect. Basically, our sympathetic system activates our fight or flight response. This response is for pounding heart when a, a car comes swerving at you or, or when you have a big fight with your partner. It's also behind sort of those elated feelings you get when you receive some exciting or good news. Balancing this is the parasympathetic system. It works to return the body to a state of relaxation and calm or rest and digest mode. Although each system engages more or less depending upon the situation, overall, we wanna see a balance between the two. So how does all of that relate to HRV? Well, first, it's important to understand one more thing about how these systems are connected. Both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system are in the main components of what we call the autonomic nervous system or the ANS. Now, the ANS is responsible for essentially involuntary physical functions. So think about things like respiration, digestion, elimination, things like that. And the ANS also regulates heart rate. And it's consistently working to maintain a balance or what we call homeostasis in the body. Basically, it wants to maintain a balance between our fight or flight and our rest and digest systems. Heart rate variability is a result of both of these systems working together, okay? So they're taking on a different degree of dominance depending upon the circumstance. The sympathetic system pushes the heart rate faster and the parasympathetic encourages the heart to slow down. So it's kind of like a push and pull and this produces variations in the time in between heartbeats, a la HRV. All right, now let's talk about how sleep can impact this number and improve your number. And look, the best way to improve your sleep is to understand your sleep, since actually it's kind of unique to everyone. A sleep routine that works for someone else might not actually work for you. So do me a favor, head over to sleepdoctor.com to take my sleep quiz. This will help you know what kind of sleeper you are, and trust me, that will make the rest of this much more helpful. At this point, we've got a pretty good understanding of how the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous systems work together to create heart rate variability. What I want to look at now is how HRV and sleep are actually related. Essentially, it's a two-way street. So the activity of our autonomic nervous system affects our ability to fall asleep and sleep throughout the night. How much and how well we sleep in turn affects the ability of our autonomic nervous system to function effectively. Now, what's more, both parts of the ANS are at work throughout the night. So falling asleep is associated with an increase in parasympathetic, but during REM sleep, the sympathetic nervous system actually becomes more active. That's kind of what dreaming is about. And any awakenings during the night that we see, we see an increase in sympathetic activity as well. So a typical night can have, I don't know, four to five different sleep cycles. So with corresponding shifts between the two systems during each cycle and from one cycle to the next. 
This should give you a sense about how complex and dynamic your autonomic nervous system activity is during sleep and why our heart rates are continually shifting. Because of this constant shift, it's important that our nervous system remains flexible as well as responsive. Okay, but what happens if our nervous system gets thrown out of balance, say with restless or short sleep, or even with disordered sleep like insomnia? In short, disordered sleep contributes to an imbalance in the ANS that can have a very detrimental effect on healthy sleep. Research shows that people with insomnia experience increased sympathetic nervous system activity throughout the night and day. Those people with insomnia tend to spend more time in sympathetic overdrive, which contributes to their inability to sleep. Deprived of sleep, the nervous system is less adept at shifting into rest mode, even at night, despite feeling exhausted. So these folks are being stuck in fight or flight mode is one way insomnia contributes to health risks like cardiovascular disease and type two diabetes. Okay, I think that it's safe to say that heart rate variability is a key measurement of the health and flexibility of your nervous system. And since your nervous system has a major hand in regulating nearly every aspect of your physiological, cognitive, and emotional functioning, HRV is a powerful signal of your overall well-being. But how can you use HRV in your daily life to improve health and get better sleep? Well, here's the good news. Actually, it's a core measurement of most health and fitness trackers. So you can use wearables uh, to get a sense of your heart rate variability. It's important though, don't measure your score against your friends. This is a highly personal number, so you only want to benchmark it against yourself. So if your HRV is usually, let's say, in the 80s and your friend is in the 120s, that does not mean that they are healthier or more fit than you. What I want you to do is watch how your number shifts each day. So if you have a number in the 80s and tomorrow it's in the 40s, well, that's actually a great sign to figure out what contributed to that. So if you're looking for ways to raise your HRV and make it consistently higher, which by the way is sort of the direction that we're always looking in, we want this HRV to be as high as possible, here are five recommendations that I think can help you raise your HRV. Number one, get plenty of exercise. Most of you watching this probably already do this, but in a 2024 study, it was found that a strong correlation between physical activity and improved HRV exists. So if you're making exercise and fitness a regular part of your routine, keep it up. And if you want a reason to start exercising, you're probably gonna see a higher HRV, so I would start soon. Next, your diet plays a big role. In a study from 2018, they found that people who followed a diet like the Mediterranean diet, one that's rich in omega-3s and other fatty acids, actually had a higher HRV. And on the other side, people who consumed high amounts of saturated or trans fat carbs actually experienced a lower HRV relative to their baseline. Really paying attention to the amount and the kind of food that you're putting into your body can actually make a big difference to your overall HRV. While we're talking about diet, the biggest HRV killer is alcohol. I know there's a lot of research out there suggesting, hey, some alcohol is okay in moderation, but we know that any alcohol is terrible for your body and unfortunately for your sleep as well. To prove the point, in a 2010 study, they found that just two drinks decreased HRV levels by around 30%. So this is probably one of the biggest things that you can do to maintain a good HRV. If your autonomic nervous system is a good indicator for overall levels of stress, another great thing that you can do is reduce your stress. I know it sounds easier than it is, but in a study published in 2020, we found that people who participated in a 10-day online mindfulness course experienced better HRV rates after the experience. This is wonderful proof that breath work, mindful practices, even journaling about what you're thankful for can be a great way to elevate your HRV. Now, one of the keys to improving your sleep is learning how sleep actually works. I have a video right here all about how sleep works and how to make sure that the sleep you get is as high quality as possible. This is Dr. Michael Bruce, the sleep doctor, wishing you sweet dreams and a high HRV.